And Father, as a family of faith, we have come inside and outside, heralding Jesus, opening up our spirits for more, more intimacy, more power, more grace, more revelation, greater light to rule in the day and to rule in the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never forget hallelujah that every time we come into god's presence you must come with an expectation hallelujah the bible says that he that cometh unto god must believe that he is in other words he exists and then that he is the rewarder not of everybody but of them that diligently seek him hallelujah Many of us have left far and near coming to learn of him to worship him to enjoy his presence to receive his word for every time his word comes the spirit of that word comes into you and he sets you he says in ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 he said the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet the spirit entered me you're not just hearing words Paul said when I came to you I did not come with the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power that your faith might not be upon the wisdom of man but the power of God what you are receiving in this place is spirit and life for John 6 63 says that the flesh profited nothing it is the spirit that quickened it said the words that I speak unto you they are spirit life capable of making you become the what the word of God is saying and he made two great lights one to rule the day and another to rule the night I've said it here and I will keep saying it you will only arise and shine to the degree to which your light comes it says arise shine not because you want to arise but your light has come the Bible says the entrance of thy word give it light hallelujah and the Lord is teaching us his ways the Bible says ask for the ancient path and walk in it the ancient our fathers the fathers of faith there were things that they knew they understood certain patterns of the spirit that gave them mastery and accuracy the Bible says that if a man desires mastery yet is he not crowned until he strives lawfully it takes a level of diligence and tenacity understanding the principles and the ways of the spirit and then when we understand his ways we will come into alignment with his spirit so that it will be in the earth as it is in the heavens and then the world will know that we are not just noise makers the world will know that we are not just tongue talkers they will see that there is something that is great. the bible says there is this treasure and is resident in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us great men doing the works of God it says we have been created in Christ Jesus we have been called created preordained predestined that we should show forth revealing his majesty and his glory and God brought every one of you to learn of the ways of the spirit hallelujah the ways of the spirit brings to end confusion because it takes education and orientation by default as a result of the fallen nature many people began to come up with their concepts and ideologies of how to live and reign in god's kingdom if you want to function and be effective in god's kingdom then you must understand his ways his patterns the bible says the nation of israel saw his acts the manifestations of power but Moses knew his ways and tonight we have a prayer God teach us your ways we don't just want to see the power show us from the archives of the spirit how did the fathers tread this path how did they come into alignment with the kingdom that Elijah will say that I that stands in the presence of God how did the psalmist understand the pattern of entering worship and coming into the presence of God he said in Psalm 100 he said enter into his gate with thanksgiving how did he know that the throne room had gates and courts 
open our eyes so oh God that we may see we are tired of religion we know that there is more save us from the arrogance that lack of light brings to the body bring us to a point that our eyes will see and let me tell you something the proof is that we will be carriers of light not under any situation and circumstances the bible says he that cometh from above is above all he that cometh from above is above cosmos the system babylon the system that aims to subject people and bring them under the bondage of satan the bible makes us to understand in romans chapter 8 from verse 18 it says for i reckon that the sufferings the constraints that our rehearsal and dealing and pressing i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us then verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation they are not waiting for everybody they are waiting for the manifestation of those the bible calls the sons let me tell you something hold on there are many words that are used as sons but there are two important ones one is called technon the other one is called weos technons mean it means a child one who is void of knowledge weos means one who by reason of understanding has attained the same status with his father so when jesus called himself the son of god they said he was god because he used the word weos he said by reason of understanding i have been elevated to a position where i can function in the god class grant us light oh god grant us light we are tired of darkness we are tired of the world asking where is our god grant us light for the entrance of your word brings light and lord cause our hearts to be simple give us understanding the bible says in all thy getting get understanding exalt her and she shall promote thee she shall bring an ornament of glory upon thy head when thou dost embrace her he said does not wisdom cry crying in the streets searching for as many who can be interested we live in a day and age where all we want is hype so that we just jump and rejoice let me tell you that's not the way of the spirit everyone who has attained mastery knows that there is no glory without a story there is no there is no increase and lifting without a constraint and a building if you came here just to jump up and get excited you can pack your bible and go back this is a school of the spirit where the word of god will radically put a paradigm and shift you until you come into alignment with the kingdom then at that point you will legislate that the king that you are has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with titles has nothing to do with prophet or apostle has everything to do with the revelation of your position and your degree of alignment in the spirit you are lord you are lord you are risen from the dead you are lord the light is shining tonight causing the veil the bible says until today as they read moses the veil is still covered in their eyes can we so can we sing that song just one more time you are lord you are lord shape a cup are you are lord, you are lord. You are lord. Is shining is shining upon you for the sake of your family for the sake of your generation Obadiah 21 says saviors shall come out of Zion light is shining that's what God is bringing your direction in the darkness hallelujah god bless you please be seated hallelujah hallelujah we apologize for being late we're just coming from a journey hallelujah i bless god because 
it's causing our eyes to see let me see how many of you have been blessed and transformed in this place sincerely from your heart hallelujah we have a goal we have a target not that which was set by man but that which was given by god to equip the bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers and pastors he said for the edification the building up of the saints that they will be equipped to do the work of the ministry to the end that all of us will come to the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ to the end that we are matured not tossed through and fro by every wind of doctrine hallelujah and by the grace of god it's always our desire to make your two or three hours that is spent every friday worthwhile hallelujah we are committed under heaven to ensure that there is no week you come and go back the same hallelujah that you equip something not just say okay i was blessed no that you can see that you are coming into greater alignment hallelujah and so i welcome everyone inside and outside i'll be doing a brief teaching and then we'll pray <clears throat> hallelujah now there's a series that we have um, but then by the leading of the spirit i'll just touch on one area of it hallelujah i'm going to be talking on kingdom economics kingdom economics that's the whole series hallelujah kingdom economics kingdom economics is the whole series but tonight i'll briefly be talking on financial freedom we've not done any teaching that has to do with finances and so it's very important hallelujah it's our desire in this place to see people who are not just spiritually fit listen it's our desire to not just see people who can pray in tongues and heal the sick and command miracles hallelujah it's our desire to see people who are economically empowered hallelujah so that they can become a blessing to their people how many of you will agree with me that most of the quarrels and the fight in our homes and our societies are directly or indirectly related to money many of you your parents begin to frown the moment you talk about money when you talk about god and his kingdom and rapture they are happy hallelujah it reminds them that this world is a temporary place the moment you talk about school fees or anything they get very sad hallelujah i'll not go into detail because of our time i want us to really take out time and pray so i'll just be sharing these principles very important hallelujah one of the most tragic things that has happened to the youth in this country nigeria is that the fathers or the educators those who claim to be the models for us to follow especially in the social and educational system have not been able to understand by the spirit the ways of god and the patterns that lead to true success i follow me now and so from the universities the polytechnics the institutions they teach and train people according to curriculums that if we are not careful may not be relevant in our generation hallelujah and so many people are raised and trained and unfortunately the family that is supposed to be the unit of education hallelujah many people say charity begins at home not just charity every true thing should start at home are you listening to me and many of us did not get the right training and the right building from our homes many of us had to learn everything most things that we know today from the media or our peers and, and some of these things have been devastating they have put a mindset in us that will lead us to failure if not aligned by the spirit of god hallelujah especially for the concept of wealth increase prosperity finances there has been a a misconception it grieves my heart every time i have the opportunity to talk with people especially tongue-talking christians concerning the subject of finances it's amazing how we keep blaming the church 
over misuse of funds and other things and the leaders the fivefold ministers do not realize that it's a responsibility to teach can i tell you something do not accuse any man of anything you have not taught him are you listening to me if i've not taught you how to be polite i have no right to accuse you of being impolite is that correct that's why the bible says the days of our ignorance god overlooks so it takes knowledge and understanding the average youth in this country has this as his financial paradigm i write jam go to the university try to do well and get good grades pray in tongues as much as i can call forth as much as i can then when i'm in final year i begin to be nice to different uncles and relatives and we aspire and look forward to NMPC and Shell and Chevron and everywhere. Only to graduate and face an endless cycle of heartbreaks and disappointment. There's such lamentation. You read it in the papers. You read it everywhere. Many churches are full of tongue-talking believers who are poor, cannot help themselves, cannot help the government, cannot help the society and then the interesting thing is many people have tried using their own principles to achieve god's result and the frustration has led to all kinds of demonic and satanic messages about wealth and prosperity the most common being that wealth and prosperity is demonic is satanic is bad and it leads people to hell hallelujah and the man of god who is preaching that message has his jeep waiting for him outside the man of god who is preaching that message has many prophetic offerings to be given to him after service the man who is preaching that message and misleading people has his children in the best of schools are you following me the man who is preaching that demonic message has millions stacked in his account the man who is preaching that demonic message has a sumptuous meal baked chicken kebab all kinds of things in his house and then we begin to teach and cripple the body another erroneous mindset is the concept that wealth and prosperity is carnality materialism and so many believers have said take the world give me jesus and then the bible says for god so loved that world hallelujah and and so we're we're giving ourselves an alignment how many of you have been taught comprehensively in your university or polytechnic or school anything about financial education nobody over 95 percent of us if at all um if not more than that did not learn things like tithing and giving from our families is that correct that's terrible and so we have a responsibility not just to teach us to pray in tongues and to release the kingdom and the power and the glory of god but to become economically empowered and let me tell you something you will never never attain mastery in any area until you understand the laws that govern that area are you following me now many of our parents are languishing people are crying recession recession people are packing up yet in the midst of it like goshen and the land of egypt where there is darkness and people are dying there is light in another place and can i tell you something we will be wicked people if we do not teach you on economic empowerment because you know what i've seen more believers backslide because of money than as a result of sickness or cultism and other things i've seen more ladies give themselves because of money am i am i ministering to someone tonight we trivialize it as if it's not a spiritual issue i've shared it here i'll never forget some years ago when a lady shared with me how her mother was forced to sleep with the manager of her company because they were stranded and it happened with the permission of the father 
Now, please keep quiet. Be, don't be saying, hey, God forbid. Before you roll your hand over your head, sit down quietly, get your notebook. Otherwise, you'll be liable of doing the same thing. I need you to know that the parents of this dear lady were not stupid people. There is a way you... How many of you have seen your parents do things that you know this is not them? The constraint that the present recession, a true apostolic ministry, must learn to address the societal issues at the moment. Any true apostolic ministry cannot shy away from the realities that are on ground. How many of you do not know that the world is in a recession? Let me see your hands. Hallelujah. Banks have been matched. How many of you know? Banks, are, I mean, banks that used to be the confidence of everyone. Ha! Ah. And we must be taught the ways of God. Otherwise, we will sustain casualties in our lives. But when we know of the way of God, when men say there is a casting down, we will say there is a lifting up. There are many of us who have been praying in tongues, praying in tongues, and our families hate us. All that you do when they're having a family meeting is for you to start the prayer and close it. Every discussion in that family doesn't concern you. You are trying to legislate the counsel of God and they look at you and say, what have you done in this family? The church is where we are today, not necessarily because we are not praying in tongues. We have not been able to come up with a level of empowerment that will affect society. Are you listening to me? We still have the church running up and down at government houses, begging for loans, begging for schemes, begging for all kinds of things. The church has turned to be beggars, begging everybody for everything. Hallelujah. As a result of not understanding the laws that God has put, many men of God have become slaves to the wealthy people in their ministries. The people have become the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And tonight, very briefly, I want to share on a few principles. Hear me, brothers and sisters. I say it with all humility. These are not things we read from books. These are principles that we are living by. And as many of you who can humble yourself to say, you know, let me tell you something. Like a great man of God, Bishop Oedeko, will say, only fools doubt proof. Are you listening to me? Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, you have no right to criticize a man of a thing until you have done twice what that man has done. Isn't it amazing how many people have written books about finances, they have, they have lined tapes about finances and there is nothing in their life that shows that they know what they are doing. Let me tell you something. If you truly know what you are doing with time, some results you show. Is that correct? If you are living in holiness with time, the results you show. If you are walking in God's principles, the end of faith is a manifestation that must appear unto all. Hallelujah. And so, this is a workshop, really. We'll do it very fast and then we'll pray. I'm talking on financial freedom. The series is Kingdom Economics. I'll just touch on one of the subtopics and then we pray. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You don't break, listen to me, look up, look up, look up. You don't break free from poverty by coming to kneel down and say, man of God, pray for me. Let me tell you something. It's not going to bring sustainable deliverance. Are you listening to me? There are many of our families that have finished all their money because they are trying to tap into everything. The greatest way to tap into the abundance of God is first to know his ways. Hallelujah. Many believers have become so lazy that we believe that our seeds can do everything for us. Thank you, Jesus. So what is financial freedom? Please write. Please write. I beg you. Write something. Write something. Write something. I remember a man of God, Pastor Chris, was sharing something and he said that a... A very successful businessman was speaking in a seminar just training students hallelujah and then he was speaking on certain ways to be financially free and when he began to speak the students were objecting and he noticed there was a student who was always saying excuse sir this is not what our lecturer taught us 
and then at a point the man got agitated and he said young man stand up he said is your lecturer a millionaire he said no he said are you a millionaire he said no he said sit down i am a millionaire i'm telling you what the market is doing keep your theory and keep all your old junk and listen to me sounds like many believers to me the moment they begin to talk open to the Deuteronomy they say, ah power to get how has it changed your life it, there's nothing that irritates me as an arrogant person who has no result hallelujah and we have lots of them in the body we claim we know one thing i have learned is that when i see someone that has something and has seen a dimension that i've not seen i humble myself and press into it hallelujah many people make noise about finances say all kinds of things yet it's telling on people we have more people telling lies doing all kinds of things in the body because of finances But the Bible says, I wish above all things that ye may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Don't let the devil deceive you and say your father is rich, your mother is rich. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What is financial freedom? Very quickly. Financial freedom. Now, look up, please. Can I have someone for illustration? Just anybody? Aaron, I like using you. God bless you. Now, look at me. The average believer in church, please look up. The average believer in church believes that he or she will be rich the moment you have a business idea plus capital to execute that idea. How many of you have thought like that? I'm telling you tonight is not true. That's the first mindset you need to change many of us have been praying oh god fifty thousand, and my life will be changed you have watched too much advert in the in, in in the media says fifty thousand can change your life and who wants to be a millionaire and so on and so forth and many people pray and say god this idea if only you can give me hundred thousand and every time you are praying god is leading you to the world and you are saying god you're a wicked person can i tell you the truth be honest those of you who got the money why are you still not rich because you said if I can just 20,000 to start that recharge card business, give me six months. God has given you three years. Nothing has changed. Terrible mindset by people. So you see people running to banks for loans. Many of our parents, many ministries, although they are tongue talking, they are living in this kind of error. Because we believe that financial freedom is equal to a business structure plus capital. Many of you will thank God tonight for not bringing the money because you would have blown it, wasted it, and been angry with yourself. Hallelujah. Oh God, 100,000 for that restaurant and see what I'll do. You really think so? Follow me tonight. He said, Johnny, at the end of it, we will pray and ask God to help us. Hallelujah. Financial freedom, listen to me. Financial freedom is financial abundance, right? having abundance plus the time the time to be blessed by that abundance plus the peace of mind to live with it that's financial freedom financial freedom is not financial abundance what many people have been pursuing is abundance that's not enough that's the kind of thing that leads people to hellfire financial freedom it's not just abundance it's abundance plus time look up how many of you will agree with me that there are many rich people who are not financially free because they don't have time their children have become strangers in their homes many people's spiritual life has gone down the drain in the quest to look for money money has become the order of the day money 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 every time and after yelling and yelling about the money they will never get it so financial freedom is not just having abundance no financial freedom is abundance plus the time you are never financially free if you do not have time many nigerians are far from financial freedom because they lack time 
and then peace of mind. The word of the Lord declares that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and added no sorrow. I've seen too many sorrowful people claiming to be laughing in their jeeps, but their sorrow will kill them. Their degree, their sorrow is directly proportional to the wealth they are having. Hallelujah. A man who used to trust his wife now separates, he puts a partition in the house because he became a millionaire. And he says, young woman, no longer my wife. This is your room. From today henceforth, and you go and make a bed with a wardrobe inside and all kinds of things. Sorrow. That's what the Bible calls. There are many of our parents that till today they are still suspecting us. You left home angry because you fought with them. They are suspecting that you are the one that stole the money and you are not even aware. What kind of life is that? Sorrow upon sorrow. Begin to suspect everybody, including your children. That's not financial freedom, that's not the desire. That's not, if God wanted us to get blessed that way, then we will never be able to attain the things that he has called us unto. Another point I want you to write is that financial freedom was not designed to be a lifetime pursuit. Get this, brothers and sisters, hear me. You are not supposed to spend your entire life trying to be blessed. You will never be able to accomplish your assignment that way. Satan has distracted us with this ugly mindset that all about our life is looking for money it has become the determinant of our jobs it has become the determinant of our geographical locations it has become the determinant of several things a man at 70 is still begging to look for job not because he likes it he's still pursuing money no sir god did not design this system that way and can i tell you something about about wealth those who don't sit down to learn the principles will begin to envy and get angry at those who are paying the price to attain it. And let me tell you, if you don't sit down and take this serious, tomorrow you'll be angry at your friends and your colleagues. That's why God is bringing this our way. Are you getting blessed tonight? There are two important factors that must be at work in your life. For you to attain financial freedom and that's where we are starting tonight i love doing this teaching timeless principles number one why are people poor why are many believers poor why won't god just open up the heavens and flood it with cash why are many tongue-talking believers why are some of us still struggling with our school fees our parents are still struggling they've been trying to build houses for donkey years it has led them into all kinds of things we have called all kinds of people to come to our house to collect the remaining money that is left all in the name of praying with with all kinds of candles and garbages in our house the bible says that they know not neither do they understand it said so the earth is out of course i'm trying to provoke someone tonight to the end that we will pray hallelujah number one you will never become financially free not according to the kingdom's way if you do not see the need that's the first point there are many believers who do not see the need there are many ministries who do not see the need every time they raise the subject of financial education you see this spiritual atmosphere that people put and feel no 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 don't we are pressing into god there are new dimensions and let me tell you something there's an error i've seen in the body many believers just believe that you just keep praying in tongues and you are praying and then one day the heavens will be open over you let's finish up this this story and you find out that many people are going to be disappointed after 10 years of serving god diligently question the bible says jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever is that correct look up how many of us can bear me witness that there are many of our parents who are campus fellowship presidents some of them are pastors they've been praying in tongues for years and they are still poor can anybody agree with me on that why is that so there are even many of our families that have not missed out on tithing and giving for once but they are still poor how many of you have been tithing 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 it's just that you don't want to say it but it has been paining you 
because it looks like something is wrong somewhere and can i tell you something the error is not from god is certainly not from god open our eyes tonight lord you must see the need so many believers do not see the need every time you are talking they have this air of ah i'm a lady i'm going to get married to a rich man i've, I've made up my mind let any poor man carry his, his his promises and come close to me and see what i'll do with him there's no manifestation pack your load and go wrong mindset got it from culture got it from films got it from all kinds of things you must see the need what does a need do to you number one a need creates dissatisfaction the bible says woe to them who are at ease in zion you can never break through a process until you get dissatisfied hallelujah you must get dissatisfied you must get dissatisfied Get dissatisfied with the fight and the quarrel that happens between your father and your mother at all times. Get dissatisfied. The Bible says through desire, Proverbs 18 verse 1, a man having separated himself, he intermeddled with all wisdom. There must be a desire. When you see the need, it creates a sense of responsibility so many people are blaming the government we blame our parents we blame the government ah they are chopping our money they stop giving us scholarship if that they were giving my mind would have changed all oh, my my lifestyle and all of that i would not have been sleeping around calm down you truly begin to break through in any area when you stop blaming people and accept responsibility say after me inside and outside in the name of jesus please say it like you mean it in the name of Jesus I stop blaming people I take responsibility over my financial destiny one more time say I take responsibility over my financial destiny yes a need brings you to a point where you you stand to take responsibility many of us are waiting for our parents to die we are praying and anticipating on their deathbed we come to visit them but we can't wait for them to die because we are waiting for something they call inheritance and before a man would die the the in-laws and the parents are already arguing about how to share things hmm. number two or still still on that point of the need a need breaks every limitation the moment you see a need for something limits will be broken in your life hallelujah how many of you have gone for lectures in the rain let me see your hands ladies how many of you have exposed your hair to the rain but you still didn't stop you just ran for lectures why when you see a need you will not see limitations again so many people see limitations and the reason is because they have not seen a need we are waiting for the day we inherit well from our parents my father told me as soon as i'm graduating a lexus will be waiting for me and one two bedroom i've been eyeing and your whole life is built on that mirage the word of god declares hear me woe unto any man who puts his strength in a man that man can be anybody your father your mother you know that song um your father may let you down it's not because it's a wicked man your mother may let you down even you yourself you will let yourself down the best and the greatest of any man is still a man i told myself i will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence i i i gladly retired from putting my strength in men hallelujah hallelujah so the first the first factor is what you must see the need say after me i see a need to be financially free number two when you have seen the need the second point is you will go for knowledge 
the second point is to go for knowledge you will never become financially free just by guessing and stumbling your way into it a great man said something he said if you wake up and find yourself rich be sure you were not sleeping hallelujah many of us have this mindset that oh god one day one day we have been receiving things that are hanging in the realm of the spirit for donkey years but the bible says let it be done in the earth as it is in the heaven that means it is possible that although a thing is in the heavens but it cannot be done in the earth hallelujah go for knowledge and the first phase of going for knowledge are you getting my points the first phase undergoing for knowledge is to change your mindset. Change your mindset. We'll talk on that right now. When you have seen the need and come to a point where you say, look, nobody in my lineage and my family has been able to bless anybody. All I inherited was what people call generational curses. That's what many of us came to know. You just knew that nothing has been working in your life. Now God has done everything by the revelation of his word and by the reality of your position in Christ. He has brought you to a position where you realize that all of these ordinances have been nailed. What are you going to leave for your own children? Hallelujah. I am convinced that my entire generation is blessed because of me. Bible says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Change your mindset change your mindset change your mindset the difference between let me show you something proverbs 22 verse 2 i believe proverbs 22 can someone read please someone read very quickly then let me have two people i need someone who looks like a rich man come on help me i mean someone to start <laughs> all right start here hallelujah aaron you can stand here listen listen to this very interesting scripture all of you look up go ahead the rich the rich and poor meet and together. the poor they meet together where in this big earth it says what the lord, the lord is, the is the maker of them all what kind of scripture is that he said the rich and the poor they all meet in the same place he said god is the maker of them all look up the bible never said god is the maker of them so God didn't make them so. He made them. They made, they separated themselves. Look up. There is a difference between the rich and the poor. And the difference is not money. Write it. Burn it into your head. I'm shouting so that it will enter your spirit. The difference between the rich and the poor is not Naira and Kobo. Believe me. change your mindset under knowledge hallelujah okay so watch this call this guy the rich god forbid this is just for hallelujah call this guy the poor are you listening to me look at this the basic difference between the rich and the poor is what their mindset say after me their mindset so the difference between where you are right now no matter how tongue talking you are and where god wants you to be financial is what repeat after me my mindset don't be ashamed of it this is a training ground say my mindset i don't care what excuse you have to give let me tell you there is no situation you are in right now that someone has not gotten to a worse situation and conquered it whether it's that your parents are late whether it's that you were born your, the, the map of your village is not in nigeria that's irrelevant are you listening to me so we are going to examine the mindset please get this there is something the rich do that make them rich there is something the poor do that keeps them poor are you getting blessed tonight number one the rich accept responsibility while the poor do not accept responsibility look at our society and see why people are poor all we are saying give us now and people lead themselves with placards how much to two thousand and they stand from morning till night go 
to offices of influential people and see a row of people waiting to seek for favor from morning till night say oh god well done no i've been trying to i was wondering if it was possible to say and the man said mm -mm, i'm busy the poor the rich hates the poor and they say leave me i say oh god well done no. and you see the guy running and his and his children now how many of you have seen your parents do that kind of thing i'll never forget when we used to rear goats we never ate one never suffered for it did everything and and where were the goats going government workers as I was carrying the last sets of goats, it, will, I, it pained me. Because the Bible says a, 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 a worker is worthy of his wages. <laughs> you work so hard only to make the rich richer. Isn't that amazing? The poor work from morning till night. While they are working, the rich are playing them like a chess. What you people call your job is someone's company. And the person is crossing his leg and playing the economy of nations like a chess and the poor are running you work so hard as soon as you make your money you take it to the market and you come back poor again only to wait for another month when will it end the poor work so hard so hard and take the money to the rich so what's their difference number one this guy accepts that i'm responsible for my finances yes my parents didn't try yes the government didn't try but i take responsibility this guy is accusing this man saying hadibim is my uncle my uncle god that child i don't know work here you think so and we're praying my father's brother sister's cousin is the commissioner and that guy never calls god punish him with this hallelujah number two this is one of the biggest point between the rich and the poor as you write it underline it the rich have mastered the art of delaying instant gratification paying the price today to enjoy the blessings tomorrow the poor they don't like delaying instant gratification sharp sharp now let's chop today and die tomorrow that's the mindset of many nigerians that's why we like all kinds of things get rich quick this and that there's one way bring one thousand go under the bridge in the evening and come i'll give you this we like things that don't have processes hallelujah but the Bible says seed, time, harvest. Hallelujah. So the rich know how to delay instant gratification. I've said it everywhere. That's why I love Igbo people. Oh no, no, come on. Don't think what you think I'm thinking. I said this during Kingdom World Summit. Come on, I was innocent. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Because they have mastered the art of delaying instant gratification. You see a young man, they just give him scholarship, 50,000. And then he carries the BB thing. Blackberry. 40,000 out of 50,000. What you have home and abroad. Give me your ping number, your ping ping. That is driving people crazy, especially ladies. All around, give me this. It looks like that's a happening thing. Give me Blackberry. And you squeeze life out of your parents. You must give me that 40,000. They say we are traveling to, to Cameroon. You have not gone for how many years? You have been gathering Cameroon money. Then you finally buy the Blackberry. And then you don't have the amount to be recharging this every month. Say, sorry, what's wrong? Say, no this phone you know all these kind of things i hope to change one soon there are so many people who have put themselves under stress because our concept of finances is that get spend just get and spend and we guys know how to do that hey guys i don't hammer oh yeah and all the psychophants who are out to finish your money will follow you then you go to peter's say oh yeah 
Help yourself, Jerry. Can I tell you something? No matter how much tongues you pray, God will never empower you beyond your level of managing his resources. Never. God will never empower you beyond the level to which you can manage his resources. Because the earth is the Lord's. Doesn't belong to you. Are you getting blessed? Instant gratification. How many of us have been feasting on the seeds that God has given us? Can I tell you something? This is God's principle. God will tell you, Selena, run down there and you will meet a great harvest. When you run to that farm, you will see a bag of seeds with wisdom to turn that seed into a harvest. He said, Lord, where is the harvest? God said, right there. That is it. Many people do not understand God's system. And that's why we get disappointed. Help us, Lord. Number three. The poor spend and spend while the rich save and invest. I cannot tell you how I feel sad over many church people. We know how to shout and call forth wealth and that's important. If you have not been calling forth money, brothers and sisters, believe me, get set, you are violating a serious kingdom law and you are going to remain poor. Say, ah, when my uncle has told me in the come, okay, oh. We have warned ourselves in this place to stop depending on men. Doesn't mean that God will not use men to bless you. Hallelujah. The poor spend and spend. Isn't it amazing that those who are the richest in this environment are the ones who are modest and visionary. Those who are the ones loud and doing all of these things, they really don't have much. The pressure of trying to prove a point. I said it during Kingdom Wealth Summit. I was, I was taking an extract of this. Many ladies, you are changing your weapon every week. Giving an impression like you're a multi-millionaire and you know you are not. Let me tell you something about pretending a status you have not yet attained. The day your money finishes, you will be forced to still maintain that status. Although you don't have the means. You have sworn hellfire for anybody that eats in Zinc House. Now your fortune has gone. Your father has told you because you are stubborn, you will not give you money again. You are hungry. You are dying. The Holy Spirit is advising your guy to enter this zinc house. <laughs> and you have given yourself a mindset. How can I at my level? Not so. Look up. Let me say this. Are you getting blessed tonight? Look up. Please let me correct something. Money can come through favor. In fact, according to God's economic system, all right, there are many ways that money comes. Remember 2009, 10, 10, Kingdom Wealth Summit, money cometh. Hallelujah. Money can come through favor. Let me give you an instance. God can tell me, say, Josh, sow 10,000 naira to Reuben's life. That's favor, right? strangers can come and feed your flock that's favor listen to me what we do not understand is that money does not grow by favor money can come by favor money cannot grow by favor there is only one biblical way of increase and multiplication say after me investment say it there is only one biblical way of multiplication Matthew chapter 25 Matthew chapter 25 I'll try to really really be fast quickly let's turn there Matthew 25 thank you Lord Jesus Christ how many of us are seeing some light over our finances right now thank you Lord Matthew 25 if you are there say amen okay verse 14 Matthew 25 14 inside and outside make sure God has your attention tonight this is very important for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his servants and delivered unto them his good unto one he gave what five talents talent means money many people say it's gift no it's not gift it's money exactly that to another he gave what 
to another he gave what he says according to his ability and straightway he took his journey hallelujah read verse 16 everybody one to read hold on he went and invested the word traded there is he did business are you following me who gave them the talent what did the master expect them to do with it multiply it correct and the bible didn't say they hold they held their hands together say, are you ready oh yeah fire and then they started bible says they went and did business are you listening to me help us oh lord okay verse 19 after a long time the lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them 20 and so he that received five talents came and brought what how did he multiply it did you see that he multiplied it again are, are you are you following me the word of god teaches us the principles i hope you know he said the kingdom of god is likened unto this is giving us the economic principle of the kingdom it says lord thou deliverest unto me five talents behold i have gained does that look like an investment language i have gained doesn't look to me like a prayer language beside them five talents more verse 21 his lord said unto him what so what does god tell those who multiply his resources okay well, let's see how good you have been reading your bibles thou has been what so he calls it faithfulness over a few things i will make you ruler over what are you seeing how to increase in the kingdom i will make you ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of the lord 22 he also that had received two talents came and then 23 let's read on and then he said that he also gained you know and um verse 24 looks like many of us are you ready now read then he which had received the one talent came and said lord i knew that thou art a hard man stop are you seeing the mindset of the poor they always give excuses always give excuses said lord i knew that thou was a hard man doing what reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not straw 25 and i was afraid fear and went and hid my talent in the earth hold on isn't it amazing that he put the talent in the earth and it didn't grow i thought you put seeds in the earth and they grow but this guy did something to his talent and although it was under the earth it didn't grow lo there thou hast that is thine 26 listen to what god is telling many tongue-talking believers and this is why we remain where we are in spite of the great future hallelujah god is saying that's beautiful but one thing thou lackest thou wicked ah look at the kinds of words the only other place this language was used was those who healed in his name and did all of this it says wicked and what slothful new testament language english students lazy lazy what although you can be a servant you can be a lazy one thou knewest that where i sowed not and gather where i have not sown verse 27 thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers and then at my coming i would have received mine with usury in other words according to god's system the worst form of investment is putting your money in the bank interesting he said you would have at least done that one hallelujah he said what take therefore this is a fearful scripture are you seeing why the wealth of many of our parents have disappeared although they are christians take therefore the talent from him and give it to who this wealth conversion that many people are saying is leaving the unbelievers some believers will be shocked that it will also disappear from their own hands it's in the bible all three were called servants yet it was collected from one and added unto another hallelujah praise god let's hurry up 
the poor go for results they like results they don't want to know the process give me fish don't teach me how to fish there are so many of us that have been blessed by wealthy parents never for once have we asked and said daddy mommy i'm of age now can you begin to teach me can you show me you have been very successful in your finances i've never cried for school fees i've never begged can you teach me what did you know that brought you this game many of us are always happy we have been privileged to be with people that can bless us we have never taken out time hallelujah the poor always like results that's why many people in the village are always fighting those in the city they are always waiting for those in the city to come and then they dance around your car expecting what give them something then you give them 1000 and they finish it or some of our relatives that are causing trouble in our homes you give them 10,000 today they call you after two weeks they say oh guy it has finished of course say send another one then when you don't send they say this wicked guy she means your wife that has carried you away she's a witch where will we end all this nonsense amazing that it happens in the church too hallelujah the rich keep learning a rich man is not interested in results all of this flamboyancy that people do you see someone with a jeep and you're like hey, hey i want that jeep anyhow anyhow no there are too many people that are after results the results are inevitable when you know the principles hallelujah hallelujah the poor depend on luck have you ever heard people say that in how nigerians are lucky oh it's my luck oh say mtn just came to build a mass on this person's land he just bought one plot of land mtn came to beg him and they are giving him three hundred thousand naira every month for using his plot of land when the holy spirit was telling two of you go and buy that land or go and do this the other person will say abba i will buy i will buy car you bought your golf as you were going out somebody jammed it it's still parked there sorry if i offend you tonight it's important it's necessary for us to enter hallelujah so are you getting the mindset now will you agree with me right now that financial freedom is not just having abundance i mean not just having a business structure and money to do it do you agree with me there are many people you open your shop and eat everything in your shop by yourself i you see people do that just to <laughs> and just carry something and, and then you are balancing the account and you go and meet as a prophet demons they are, my things are just disappearing you have poultry ah, carry 10 chickens give them now you, you forget that those things are reducing the point you come and call your wife madam come what is happening in this poultry then you see your son simply because he has not been smiling you say come here you have said joining bad friends abby go and bring the remaining and your son say, what is there before he talks you are giving him the... look this is this is you are laughing but this is the story of some of us here but god wants us to change so let's hurry up change your mindset after changing your mindset realize that god's economic system works on principles oh help us holy spirit that we get this it's not guesswork it works on definite principles hallelujah i'm going to talk about just three laws very quickly three laws number one the law of value right the law of value the law of value take it seriously the law of value look up please look up please i want everybody to look up this guy sells recharge card for instance is that correct um let's say this guy sells electronics look up 
because I do not produce what they sell, if I want to get it from them, how do I get it? I exchange it. So who will be getting the money? Those who have the product. Is that correct? The law of value. You must add value to yourself and you must have something to offer. Otherwise, you will remain poor. Wealth is for those who have something to offer. What do you have to offer? That was the question the prophet asked the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. He said, what do you have in your house? The law of value. Look up, please. I see so many believers who pray. That's wonderful. Confess God's word. That's wonderful. But I do not see us investing in knowledge to know the principles. I want to provoke all of us now, inside and outside. How many of you this year have bought books on finances? by kingdom people books on finances let me see your hands don't feel bad you will not go to hell so do you see that it's not god's fault that we are where we are come on no nobody's condemning you tonight we're in a school is that okay we are provoking ourselves hallelujah the law of value let me say something i respect although i am sorry because their wealth is soon going to leave them all of the people who are not wealthy by kingdom principles but these people sit day and night this is what the rich do the rich always get knowledge and the poor are just searching for anything they can search where to patch and manage they were managing here and then the rich have the knowledge of the system many of us do not refine ourselves look up the bible makes us to understand in esther chapter 2 that although esther was already a beautiful lady are you listening to me was she qualified to stand before the king although she was beautiful but she needed to do what develop herself there are many of you that have been given potentials and talents by god every meeting you go you still see them shouting this issue of your talent and your potential and the giftings of god in your life and many of us have not taken it seriously hallelujah the bible says the gift of a man makes room have you read that in your bible the gift of a man makes room for him steve please come hallelujah what's his name who called him strings his father competence gave him that name hallelujah are you following me now I knew when we were roommates with Steve and would come and Steve would be rehearsing on this guitar he had tapes of many people who had gone ahead of him are you following me now and he would rehearse and build himself that time nobody knew him as it were but he was building how many of you remember David David had potentials but he remained in the wilderness what was he doing in the wilderness he was building many of us get up with our own refined talents and we are angry why the world is not rushing towards us you come to stand to present a special number and what the keyboardist is playing and what you are singing is different the keyboardist is playing and then you just raise your song and you are not even aware that you have made a mistake you are not even aware that you have missed the key then you say i'm producing a debut album how in the world will i buy your album am i provoking you it's only in the church that we find people who are not competent and think praying in tongues will cover for incompetence go for competence that's what the law of value says train yourself equip yourself by the grace of god with all humility one of the reasons why we are enjoying good sound and all of this thing is because the people in the department are training and building themselves consistently how many of you have been blessed by the worship team? How many of you have been blessed by the media people? Dio, please stand up. Dio just came back. Hallelujah. He had been on training with um, Frontline Media Academy, hosting some of the best media people around the nation for two weeks. After that, he went to Lagos to have another training. Does he pray in tongues? Answer me. Has he been attending miracle service? Why did he go for training? His article was recently 
um i think so he was telling me one of his articles i hope you know last year he got the best student journalist in nigeria why in the world will he not get it the best student journalist hallelujah i need you to know that beyond tongues with all humility to god be the glory but one of the reasons why things are working for us is we have paid the price to delay instant gratification and build. Are you listening to me? There are so many things. Many of you may not know. Let me give you an instance with one person. How many of you know that Ejimi is a chartered wealth manager? Don't you think we are just some bunch of visionless pastors who have struggled and tried. I pass here nowhere. I pass here nowhere. I just say, well, let's just quietly do ministry. Hallelujah. Go for knowledge. Provoke yourself. Stop looking for results right now. Go for knowledge. And the results will follow you. Stop looking for results and no, no, go for knowledge. Hallelujah. Day and night. When you come to our house i say it with all humility you can ask those who come around day and night either we are studying digging in the word or we are online researching on things or buying books or god jordan is here ask him he's the one who supplies books for us as soon as he comes back from lagos he's calling us there is this book there is that book go for knowledge those who are above are those who go for knowledge favor is when preparation meets opportunity many of you have not prepared yourself you will disappoint yourself in the days of opportunity esther prepared herself for one year and when the opportunity came she took advantage of it bishop td jakes wrote a book maximizing the moment we must learn how to maximize the moment hallelujah the law of value sit down build yourself God has told you you're going to have an event management and a catering a catering institute how many world top caterers do you know how many do you know in nigeria if you cannot list five proficient people in the field you believe god will bless you with i am convinced you are not serious hallelujah are you listening to me you want to do interior decor or you want to do fashion if you cannot list five proficient people who have made it in your field you are not serious at all hallelujah you want to sing you've written 36 songs and you want to break them into three and release all the albums who are the christian artists you know in the world you don't know what's the latest album by kotka you don't know i don't care all i know is that we have a church with large people there are plenty of people in Koinonia. If I release this album now, Abba, it will sell. Hallelujah. Let me say something with all humility. Hope is here. She bakes and she really aspires to bake very well. I have watched her improve. Hallelujah. I have watched her. I remember a time when she came and met me and we sat down and began to talk and to build ourselves. How many of you are building yourselves? I'm not supposed to be saying this, but I'm just saying it to provoke you. To challenge you. Hallelujah. How many people are building themselves? Mukhtar is here, the chief usher. He has been building himself. He runs a laundry. He runs a laundry as a student. He's the one who launders our clothes. Kenny runs a laundry building themselves and what many of us do is to sit down you are gisting from morning till night let me tell you something that kind of mindset is the mindset that has caused many people to be disappointed are you getting blessed tonight so sit down tell yourself sit down say it sit down say settle down and build yourself the law of value go for knowledge go for excellence be competent i made up my mind that there is no field god has asked me to rule and reign that i'll be ashamed 
Bible says study to show yourself approved. A workman. We only use it for school and university. What happens when you graduate? Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number two. The law of investments. I've said it. The only way money grows is by investment. Many of us have no knowledge of the financial vehicles that are available. Many of us do not know. Highest, what many of us know about investment is that you can have a small shop, open your, have your gari, indomie, weave on, put your little weave on, and, and, and add, add shampoo, and, and then that's all. I know it's unfortunate our educational system is not teaching us but how many of us have made it a point of duty to go out of the box and help yourself hallelujah are you getting blessed the only way money grows is when you invest can i tell you something many ministries are poor today not because they don't have partners they are always running on deficit you collect one million as your offering your budget is one million how in the world do you plan to be rich and that's why we have people begging every day ministers begging come help me now are you could not see my life am i not begging <laughs> i'm sorry if i sound arrogant i'm touching a topic that i think is very important hallelujah very important the law of investment and so what's your assignment sit down this night and throughout this week begin to find out all the business vehicles that are available for you that you can start with your 1000 2000 to please stand up i remember i'm saying it uh, um i remember when she used to meet me and talk and we used to talk about different business things she was really tired and said she wanted god to help her today how many of you know the recharge card this thing just in front of chapel that's her own it belongs to her she's the owner today has he reduced your prayer points sweetheart no no, no i mean has he reduced your prayer points on finances well she, i'm not sure she understands what i'm saying hallelujah how many of please sit down god bless you how many of us go to god and the time you are supposed to use and bless him you plan to pray for six hours five hours is crying and begging i said do this thing for me now god you are able to by the grace of god one of the things that has accelerated our spiritual life is we have minimal time talking about money in the place of prayer so i can go to the place of prayer and say i hail you most high you can't be worshiping god like that when there's fire burning under you hallelujah number three the law of accumulation i'll stop there the law of accumulation the law of accumulation simply put big is small plus small plus small plus small plus small i can I, I keep i keep laughing at people who are waiting and wishing you ask them they bring their budget and all of this say how much say 10 million naira. say i have faith say fine you have been chopping all the 10 million in the little five five thousand and ten ten thousand you have been blowing you see there's a twenty thousand oh jerry you will not do all of these things and then you go and spend it on useless things do you not realize that one million naira is 1,000 Naira in 1,000 places. Hello? Is that correct? Let me give you an assignment. Go to the bank and tell them to give you a total of all the money that's entered your account since you open it. you see how many estates you would have built by now. Where did the estates go to? Your trainers. Or your, your, your t-shirts that you do as in me, Ben Down Boutique, my new creation in Christ, man. Really? What in the world is wrong with you to go and take that? Conserve it. A day will come you can own a boutique. Stop trying to prove points. 
those you are trying to prove a point to they are not even looking at you hallelujah once upon a time we ate in community market we are happy about it today and we are glad for the transition hallelujah learn to appreciate your transitions don't be ashamed of it someone comes and he sees you at that joint that daraka joint where they sell akara and this is oh yeah looking as if you don't don't you know it you just sit there in the smoke no problem say mama 13 era add 15 era on and you are praying lord this is not my future it's just a journey lord this is not my future somebody says ah pastor yeah no problem at least i'm not defrauding anybody in church there was a time we used to drink tea at this meshai joint you don't know it doesn't look like it now oh there was that glorious time and Jimmy was at the forefront of it an indomie they'll tie it for you they'll fry it you'll not even do well they'll just turn it i know it oh don't be deceived by this suit we have been there so what is wrong if you are there now why are you embarrassed about it you are spending two two thousand in mr biggs every day where are you going with it you are not producing anything there's no inflow but you are spending money doesn't make sense hallelujah we don't eat if there's no fish in our food every day 100, 100 naira is going on 300 naira you are eating in cafeteria purely and you know that there's not much coming in the law of accumulation says that you begin to save small by small the journey of a thousand miles begins with what ah josh is only ten thousand they give me per month find out the person who collects two thousand per session who has been saving and has twenty thousand now warren buffett one of the world's richest person hallelujah he was asked a simple question and he was said ah how are you so rich like this he said he had been investing and he had allowed his investments to grow for over 38 years and they said what is your worst mistake in life he started investing at age eight he said my worst investment is i started investing late how old are you happy birthday how old are you hallelujah is this a call for us tonight is this a call for us to sit up many of us are on steady allowance hundred thousand fifty thousand every week yet our lives have not changed why because we are wasting it day and night and you are saying god more god will never give you more until you prove you are faithful are you listening to me until you prove you are faithful we'll have to stop here for now i hope you were able to learn something i look forward to a time when we'll, we'll take a week and we'll do a proper financial seminar hallelujah are you are you looking forward to that time because it's our desire that our life will change do you know that if your life changes you will give more many of you have a heart to give it's just that the means is not there how many of you feel very bad when there are projects and you truly cannot give you feel very bad the only way is not prayer and say lord those who don't have help them to give this is how god helps them to give light shines in the darkness rise up on your feet and let's pray god bless us go ahead and just pray in tongues for one minute we're wrapping up tonight say lord thank you for this knowledge grace to mix your word with faith a season has come for me to change my life change my finances the kingdom will move forward when you're financially empowered your families will move forward you will end pain and tears and tragedy in your family the bible says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed hallelujah before i round up let me say this malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12 
gives us the foundation of a believer's prosperity hallelujah the foundation begins to talk about our tithe and our offerings there are so many people here who are not faithful in tithing you're not faithful in tithing you've been hearing about your tithe a ten percent and you are you are being you're being deceived the eyes this man of god the bible says ye are cursed verse 9 please verse 9 it says ye are cursed with a curse for ye have robbed me even let's start from verse 8 please let's run to it i know we're out of time verse 8 very quickly please will a man rob god he said yet ye have robbed me but he said wherein have we robbed thee he said what in tithes so if you don't tithe you are a thief you are a robber so says the word of god as a result verse 10 or verse 9 it says you are cursed with a curse for ye have robbed me even this whole nation verse 10 bring you what all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat in my house he said prove me now here we say the lord if i will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be no room enough to receive it verse 11 he says and i will rebuke this is the spiritual agency behind the poverty of many families it's called the devourer i will rebuke the devourer for your sake and it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground neither shall your vine cast her fruit before her time in the field thus said the lord verse 12 the last verse and all nations shall call you blessed for ye shall be a dislike some land saith the lord of hosts there are several of us here we have been praying and fasting and we are not faithful in our tithe i like you to know that you are going to pray tonight and say lord i realize i have been unfaithful i receive grace tonight to be diligent in my tithing as you add all other laws diligent in your tithing diligent in your giving many of us are stingy and greedy the bible says there is he that scattered and increased there is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty go ahead and pray say lord greed and selfishness i command it out of my life i am a giver 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 hallelujah hallelujah i don't do this but let me provoke everyone please i like you to bring out a seed bring out a seed everybody please just just hold something in your hand hold hand this is for someone who, who can i need everybody to connect with something who doesn't have something to hold on to i'm serious who doesn't have come hallelujah hold on to something hallelujah please hold on to something who doesn't have let me just give one more person we are not trying to get your money brothers and sisters i'd like you to bring out a seed i want to pray for you don't you think i know that there are ministers who are out to cheat people and mislead people please ushers very quickly can we have you come up with all shooting baskets right in front do it quickly please we're out of time we have to do this hallelujah very very quickly please ushers run and come hallelujah i want to pray no just hold it stand at the rows and at the eye inside and outside we are going to do that quickly please if you don't have a seed in your hand hold the hands of someone who has just connect please don't be ashamed we are very serious hallelujah we are going to pray and say lord we make up our minds to be diligent in tithing diligent in giving and diligent in abiding by this principle lift up your voice and pray that's the prayer point grace in my tithe oh god grace come on pray in my tithe i receive grace to be a faithful tither i stop robbing god grace to be a tither grace to be a tither grace to be faithful god will not rob you grace to be a tither now pray and say lord grace to give i break the spirit of greed go ahead 
and pray. Many of you are greedy. Many of you are stingy. That's why you will not move forward financially. Say, Lord, I break that spirit of greed. That spirit that will only withhold. Thinking God wants to cheat you. I break that spirit of greed. God is a good God. He will not rob you. Hallelujah. 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 Now I'm going to pray for this seed very quickly. As I pray for this seed, I'll drop it. As you drop your seed, begin to pray. All of these points, the law of value and the rest. Say, Lord, this week I sit down. Many of you, God will give you ideas. God will give you things. So please take it seriously. Help. Let's help our families. If they couldn't help us, let's help them. Hallelujah. Father, I pray, lift up your seed. Father, we are doing this according to the word of the Lord. I pray, Lord, that there will be an avalanche of wealth, riches, and prosperity. This is a prosperous ministry. You have blessed us with it. We have the power to prosper. Lord, there are people trusting you for school fees. There are families trusting you. They are in debt. They are in recessions. They are trusting you. Many have lost in their businesses and investments. Many are trusting you to get by. Lord, I pray that as this seed is casted prophetically, let people begin to enter unusual realms of concepts, insights, ideas. Let fear die. That fear that stops you from taking bold steps, let it die. God is with you. God is with you. You will not fail. You will not fail. Hallelujah. Now go ahead and drop your seed and begin to pray in tongues. Drop your seed and in one minute begin to pray in tongues. Please let's hurry up. We are out of time. As you drop your seed, pray in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. I'm moving forward. In the name of Jesus. The grace of God is speaking for me in my finances in the name of Jesus in my finances in the name of Jesus on behalf of my family on behalf of my ministry on behalf of my business pray for your family pray for your ministry pray for your church pray for your business say Lord enough is enough enough is enough enough is enough let my light break forth inside and outside pray 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 when men say there is a casting down we'll say there is a lifting up there is a lifting up there is a lifting up come on pray pray in the spirit i know we're out of time but this is important for your destiny Pray the spirit. Let the least among us be as great as David. Let the least among us be as great as David. Let the least among us be as great as David. Lord, we believe your word. You are not a man that you should lie. You are not the son of man that you should repent. Your word is yea. Your word is amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very quickly, three books to help you in your finances. Money will not make you rich. Money won't make you rich by Sunday Adelaja. Please buy it. It's available at the Jordan bookstore. Buy the truth. It's part of the law of value. Money won't make you rich. Sunday Adelaja. We recommend three of them. Unfair Advantage. Robert Kiyosaki. Unfair Advantage. Hallelujah. Covenant of Wealth. Bishop David Oyedeko. Covenant of Wealth. Bishop David Oyedeko. The Law of Prosperity. Kenneth Copeland. The Law of Prosperity. Kenneth Copeland.
please write it I'll repeat it very quickly money won't make you rich Sonia Delaja unfair advantage by Robert Kiyosaki I don't like many of his books but that one book is a very powerful one hallelujah the covenant of wealth by Bishop David Oyedeko hallelujah there are many unhealthy books you should not read they come from satan one of it is called the 48 laws of power don't you ever find yourself reading those books they look like they are financial books they are they are books orchestrated by demons they will cause you not to fear the lord and they will teach you how to manipulate people by the grace of god we carefully select books that we have read that we understand that their principles are consistent with the word of God. Hallelujah. Please read. Sit down this week. Get a new exercise book. Write my financial destiny. You have one on your dreams and visions. Write one on your finances. Hallelujah. Blessed Spirit of God. We thank you for your presence. As we explore by the spirit the riches that are wrapped up in your person we pray that you grant us understanding break the bread and cause our eyes to see hallelujah 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 i want you to just walk up to two or three people you don't need to smile and make a lot of ceremony around it just tell them it's good to see you hallelujah Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to see everyone tonight. All looking glorious. Hallelujah. Now, before we quickly go into the word, I'd like to do something. Um, mommy, today is their um, one year anniversary, and she told me, Can you come, Ma, and all of the family members? We want to pray for them. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Mommy and all the children and the loved ones. Where are they? You are disowning your mother. Hallelujah. Nankwat, where are you? Oh, they are not around. Inside, outside. If you are outside, please appreciate them as they come. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. It's exactly one year since um, their daddy went to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. And um, they are using. by the wayside in the name of Jesus we celebrate their commitment in this house and Lord I pray that you who rewards them that diligently seek you will reward mommy and the entire family thank you Lord none of them will be a disappointment in the name of Jesus go ahead and prophesy promotion go ahead and prophesy increase go ahead and prophesy lifting say Lord over their finances we declare that they are covered they will in the name of Jesus, we speak academic excellence in the life of the children. We decree and declare over mommy, her job, and the works of her hands. They are blessed according to Psalms 1 verse 3c. What's 
whatsoever you do prospers in the name of Jesus. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds you and your family. You are separated from the company of wicked and unreasonable people. Hallelujah. show you something interesting tonight. act like a native doctor, you can act like Satan. All kinds of things. That's a form. The Bible says that there are a group of Christians that have the skill and the art of acting like they are serious with God. Acting like they truly believe his word. Hallelujah. Acting like they are serious about growing acting like they truly desire more of him, acting as though his word is final authority in their life. The Bible says, having a form, the Bible calls that activity a what? A form of godliness. So you pray in tongues like the rest pray. You seem to have a zeal. You say, oh God, more of you. When you see people getting on their knees, you, you can act it well scripted play. The Bible calls it a form of godliness. It says, but denying the power thereof. Hallelujah. So the proof that your godliness is genuine is that there must be power behind it. That it must produce some results that can compel men to see that you are not pretending. I'm telling you, there's nothing that grieves my spirit like seeing many believers acting as though they truly desire God. Acting as though we truly love him. 
know, when you raise the song, be thou enthroned, then everybody just keeps quiet and you just lift up your hands and you are thinking about all manner of things. Hallelujah. The Bible calls it a form of godliness. You assume, you pretend it, your room has all of the Jesus signs and everything. You have all the Christian songs on your phone. The Bible says it's the form of godliness. But they deny the power. Something in you tells us that although you are acting in the crowd, but there's something that is betraying that form. Hallelujah. That every time you join the crowd to do like they are doing, sing all the Christian songs, something seems to point out and let us know that, no, there's, there's, there's something not true and there's something not genuine hallelujah and god has a problem with that having a form of godliness where you hear the word of god and you jump and say whoa hallelujah but you are the last to practice that word you truly do not believe it the true proof that you believe a thing is that you put it into practice hallelujah when you hear an information and you put it to work, hallelujah, it proves that you believe it. The Bible says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power of it, it says, from such, turn away. That's not even the interesting verse. Verse 6. For of this sort they who creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away by various laws. 7. This is the verse. Read this. Ever learning. Ever what? Rema. Revelation. More light. More revelation. Piles of books. Are you following me now? King James. Amplified. New Living Translation. The Message Translation. Different tapes by different men of God. The Bible says ever learning. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. There are so many believers. They go for every program. Are you following me tonight? They do everything. They, every prayer meeting, every night vigil, every book in town, you buy it. Whether you read it or not, you buy it. Every book, everything, but they are the last to put the word of God into practice. They have sealed their mind from coming to a point where they truly believe and they come to a point where they refuse to be convicted by the power of the truth. You believe in tithing, you can teach about tithing, deliver an excellent message about tithing. Are you following me now? You can encourage your roommate, shout, but you are not a tither. These are the kinds of people the Bible says ever learning. Have you tried to confront someone who is suffering spiritually and when you meet him he will tell you his own problem he will tell you and tell you what the solution is but the person is dying of that problem have you have you encountered people like that you're trying to tell them i think it's time to get serious god they say look even the bible says it that in the last day they this and that and that say turn to the book of this uh, this chapter one they even give you the other verse and the person is suffering there's nothing as terrible as that hallelujah that you are suffering while you have the solution to your situation. Bible says it's not just the hearers of the word, but the doers of the word. The Bible says they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them. Why? Because it was not mixed with faith. I want to ask you a question. In, I think, 2005 or 6, one day, now, I'm not saying you should practice it. This was a rhema. The Lord stopped me from reading my Bible for one week. He said I should not open it for one week. And the reason was because he said I was pretending like I was interested in studying my Bible and growing. He said if I were, if I were practicing one-tenth of the things that I've gathered in my head, my life would have been better than it is. And so he said, hold on. Before you continue in this, your wild religious search that is not producing any result, take an inventory of all the notes you've written in different meetings and apply these things to your life and then you will find true change. And from that day, I made up my mind not to do things as a result of religion. How many of us do quiet time? Six o'clock, you are up in the morning and you hate it. You hate the God that you hate it. You hate everybody that makes you. You just laugh as if you like it. 
Hallelujah. You know all the scriptures about finances, but there's nothing to show for it in your life. You know all the scriptures about, about um, favor, all the scriptures about the grace of God, all the scriptures about everything. For me, every time I see a particular area of my life not bringing the fullness of the light, and I know that I have that word, I know that it has not entered my spirit. And then I stop lying to myself. I sit down and allow the Lord to walk on it and let that scripture be seated in me. Are you getting blessed tonight? Because there are many people, we, we love knowledge and there's nothing wrong with it. Hallelujah. But knowledge that is not applied will not profit you. Are you listening to me? Did you know that for over 70 to 80% of the messages you hear in church, they are not new? Most of them are only a repetition of the things the Holy Spirit has been teaching for years that many people have refused to obey it. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said this some time ago and let me say it again. There is a difference between newness and freshness. Hallelujah. For something to be fresh, it doesn't mean it's necessarily new. Are you listening to me? The word of God may not always come new, but it always comes fresh. So you can hear a teaching on faith that you've heard, and it can come again, but it will come with a freshness. That's why you listen to a tape that you've listened to over 20 times. And then, when you are listening to it the 21st time, a light comes in for me, the freshness of the word. Are you following me now? And so it's important, my first admonishment for us tonight is that we don't just junk ourselves with knowledge and knowledge and knowledge that we don't apply. Are you getting blessed tonight? That's the first admonishment. Because it's our desire here, not just to have a crowd of people come inside and outside and we celebrate and say God is doing great things. Our definition of great things is not just the number of people that come. Our definition of great things is those who hear the word, receive it, understand it, apply it, and they are transformed by it. Then empower others to walk in that same reality. That is our definition of success. Hallelujah. That you, re you believe the word. Do you believe? Listen to me. Do you believe that the word of God is able to give you a beautiful future? Do you believe it? Or you are just smiling and saying, let me quietly believe or before I frown my face and land into trouble. Do you really believe it? If nobody is with you and you are in your room alone, has it become a reality to you that content in this word is the key to your life and destiny? Hallelujah. Do you believe that this word was given by God to guide you, to lead you, to instruct you, to show you the ways of the spirit and the ways of the kingdom? Do you believe it? Do you believe that the knowledge of this word and God's principles will set you above in life? Recession or no recession, job or no job, Nigeria or no Nigeria, there's nothing wrong with being a Nigerian. There's nothing wrong with being an African. There's everything wrong with being a disobedient person to God's word. That's what the Bible calls iniquity. A willful, perpetual, and continual state of rebellion and hardness to God's word and his principles. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? Our fathers took this and they took it seriously and it transformed their lives. Bible says, ask for the ancient parts and walk in them. I don't know about you, but I'm not just preaching this word. I truly believe it. I believe it. I believe that in this word is the secret for life and godliness. I believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I'm not just praying in tongues because power came on me and then I saw everybody doing it. I said, join them more. At least those who are praying in tongues were seeing the result. Do you really believe that praying in tongues can change you? Do you believe that every time you pray, many of you pray in tongues and laugh at yourself. You just shy from the mirror and say, hey God, bro, big person like me, like this, doing as if I'm a child. All these stupid people. 
Yet you are praying in tongues. You may even be in prayer band. Let me tell you something. The word that you truly believe and take serious. Stop laughing about what God is not laughing about. Are you listening to me? When God takes a thing seriously, take it seriously. I don't like Satan. He's not my friend. I have nothing to do with him. Why? Because that's exactly the same thing with the Lord. I don't have any business with demons. I don't have any business with all of these things. I believe the word of God. The word of God is final authority over my life. I don't believe the word of God because of the whole burden of being a preacher. No, not at all. I believe God's word. It is my daily bread. It is my oxygen. I believe in the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the voice of the Holy Spirit. The success of a believer is directly tied to the voice of God and the word of God. Let me tell you something. Show me a man who has everything in this life but lacks the ability to hear and walk with the Holy Spirit. And then to live by the principles of God's word. I show you the most vulnerable person. Because he will fall like a leaf at any time. The Bible says, ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's my prayer tonight, even as we start this teaching, that we will not be ever learning such that the moment they say anything, you say, ah, I know the scripture. They say this, you say the rema and say all of this, but your life is far from the revelation and the truth that you know. That God will deliver us from the form of godliness and bring us into the reality of godliness where we know his principles. Hallelujah. We've been doing a teaching on kingdom economics. Helping us to understand the structure and the principles of God even as regards our finances. And I started last week by saying that every true apostolic ministry is put by God to address the needs of the people and the needs of society. Hallelujah. When Jesus saw the multitudes hungry, he addressed that need. Are you listening to me? And one of the things that God has committed to us, one of the responsibilities is to make sure that we are not just praying in tongues doing very well spiritually, doing very well academically, and then suffering financially. It's unfortunate that the educational system does not have a program designed to teach people God's ways of wealth and prosperity. That's landed people in trouble. The average person, I said last week, the average person, our concept of prosperity is get up, go to school, do very well, get good grades, and hope one day that somebody will employ you, and then if you do your best, maybe one day you can just hit a fortune and then your life will change. Hallelujah. And then with the current recession, parents and people are languishing, people are living in fear every day. The concept of Godfatherism and Godmotherism Everybody is looking for every human anchor. I've said it in this place, but let me repeat it. I beg you, I can go on my knees and beg you. Take your eyes off men. Are you listening to me? Men will disappoint you again and again and again. The Bible says, woe to him who puts his strength in a man. He said, for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. Ah, my uncle is going to do this for me. I'll never suffer in this life. You don't know how much my father has. You don't know how much my mother has. There's one house that they built for us there. As soon as my father dies like this, we'll sell it. And then this and that. What kind of life is that? And you keep wishing that people die and get out of the scene because you believe. There are so many of us, especially the guys, who are sitting and smiling every time you see your father's paper and you see your name at the wheel. You say, Lord, thank you. What a destiny. I've come to find out that only the word of God can guarantee a secure life. Do you believe what I'm saying? Only the word of God. We live in a very vulnerable time where if we do not live by the principles of God's word, we will suffer and many people have backslidden as a result of finances. Many homes have been broken as a result of finances. And so last week we began by talking about financial freedom. How many of us still remember? 
Hallelujah. We spoke about financial freedom, how that financial freedom is not just having money. It's amazing how people's concept of wealth and prosperity is just having naira and kobo. So you say, I have one million in my account. I'm rich. You are not rich. Not at all. Hallelujah. How many of us believe is God's desire for you to be prosperous? If you really don't believe, don't raise your hands. You will not go to hell. How many of us truly believe? Don't, don't be, don't try to, no, no, no. I need you to be serious. Just lift your hands. Let me see. Inside and outside. How many of you believe that you will serve God better when you are prosperous? Hallelujah. I am totally convinced. This lifestyle of, okay, let me earn 50,000, me, my wife, I plan to have only two children, not more than that. And so, two children, Stephen and Mary, two children, and then our nice house, three bedroom flat, no taking visitors, and then our little car, God just bless us, one small jeep, and then we live our life. How in the world do you want to bless people that way? Because selfishness has been the order of the day for many people. So if you think of wealth from a selfish perspective, you don't need much, correct? But when you think about the kingdom and the agenda of God and the souls that are perishing and how much it costs to bring souls to the knowledge of Christ and to equip them, you will truly desire the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Then we have two categories of people. One, those who outrightly hate prosperity. And that's predominantly because they have tried and used secular means to achieve God's kind of result. And so they are reacting to their frustration. They forget every time you see all those young boys. Oh, forget, Jerry. They know what they are touching here and there. I said it yes, um, last week. If you refuse to press into certain blessings, you will naturally be angry when you see someone getting blessed. Have you seen someone, a lady who just made her hair and someone is frowning? What has her hair got to do with your, your own life? Find your way. Or somebody just cooks a nice meal and you're frowning. Or you see Aaron with his nice suit and just say, this boy self. You know, it amazes me when people waste their time talking about others and doing all. Why can't you press in for more? Hallelujah. Just sit down and say, busy, always looking fine. Oh, Jerry. And so God is teaching us his ways. Hallelujah. So we'll continue from where we stopped last week. Tithing. We're talking about the subject of tithing. It's important to talk about the things that connect us to the wealth of heaven. Please take it seriously. Take this message very seriously. We're going to pray. The, the subject of tithing. Hallelujah. I want you to know that your first connection. Listen. Your first connection to the abundance of heaven is what? Your tithe. Say after me, my first connection to the abundance of God is my tithe. One more time. My first connection to the abundance of God is my tithe. Very, very important. Your tithe is a tenth portion. One tenth. According to Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12 the bible says that will a man rob god that's an interesting question will a man rob god he said yet ye have robbed me but he said wherein have we robbed thee he says what so how do we rob god there are so many armed robbers around who are crying and asking god to open the windows of heaven the bible says that you have robbed me in tithes and offerings Tithes. Your tithe is a tenth portion of your increase and the blessings and the finances God gives you. In Jewish days, they didn't use money, naira and kobo as it were. Are you following me now? And so, the tithe was a tenth portion of their increase from their farm, their cattle, and all of this. For you now, the tithe can be the first, the tenth portion of your one-tenth of your income. Are you listening to me? Verse 11, verse 9, sorry. It says, as a result, listen, this is a very, very dangerous scripture. It says, ye are cursed with a curse. Why? For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Are you seeing that if you refuse to tithe, your tithe is not an admonishment, it's an instruction. Are you listening to me? 
The Bible says as a result of being negligent in the ministry of tithing, there is a cost that comes upon you. Hear me? That's not the cost that is the opposite of Abraham's blessings. Are you listening to me? This is a separate cause. We are going to be reading it now. The word cause there means woe. That you make yourself vulnerable to mishaps. Situations and circumstances that will frustrate your Christian work, especially your finances. This is God speaking. He said, because you have chosen to rob me, according to God's order and God's system, the house of God was supposed to be financed and blessed by the tithes and the offering. So all of the people are blessed by the priests. And then they go and walk. When they bring the blessings, they take a tenth portion and take it to the storehouse of God. Hallelujah. And then as a result, they perform their kingdom obligation and then they are entitled to certain prophetic blessings. Verse 10. Bring ye how many? How many? Bring ye all the tithes into where? The storehouse. That there may be what? This is the purpose of tithe. You know, many times we pray and say, Lord, as if the tithe will evaporate and, and just fly into heaven and then it will be at the right hand of God. No. The tithe is to the end that there may be meat in my house. Hear me. The Bible says, and prove me. I put my reputation to stake. That if you perform this kingdom obligation, prove me. Say yet the Lord of hosts. If I will not, that's the first blessing. I will not what? Open to you the windows of heaven. You know what the windows of heaven is? The last time the windows of heaven opened before that time, manna and quail, is it in your Bible? fell and fed the people ate and had enough to their food the bible says if i will not open to you the windows of heaven the windows of heaven are not open to you just by prayer and fasting and is by there are certain principles are you following me this is how god designed his system you cannot try to act in another way and expect god's results if I will not open to you the windows of heaven. Number one. Number two. And pour you out a blessing. God will pour a blessing. And he describes that blessing. He says that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I will pour you out a blessing. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. Let's see the third blessing. And I will, what? One of the few places, if not the only place in the scripture, where God says he will do something on your behalf for, this, for the devil. Every other place he says, you cast out devils. You rebuke Satan. But God says, on account of tithing, I make it a responsibility. I'm going to be teaching you what the devourer is. The devourer is not an eat. The devourer is an activity. Is a demon spirit. Are you listening to me? The activity of demon spirits over your finances, over your health, over your blessings. Have you not seen families that the moment they collect salary, everybody just starts getting sick? until that last cobble finishes that's the activity of the devourer many of our parents think that okay you change a job or get promotion or add another job that's never going to solve you do not solve a spiritual problem using physical means hallelujah it says that i will rebuke the devourer this devourer is the one in charge of all of this recession and the rest. A great servant of God called Apostle Les Krause was having a time of prayer, traveling in the spirit. And suddenly he was caught up in the spirit. And he went into a room and he saw certain demons, Satan and two other demons. Hallelujah. And then they were discussing, talking about different things about the saints. And he was standing and watching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And one of the demons just looked at him. And the Holy Spirit told him, they said, the name of that demon is called Apollyon. And he referred him to the book of Revelation where it talks about Apollyon. Are you following me now? And then he began to describe the ministry of that demon and all of these things. And he said, they are the ones in charge of stopping the finances from reaching the sons of light. 
And then he said something that caught my attention. That Satan prefers a healthy church than a prosperous church. Isn't that surprising? That means Satan will prefer that you have a revelation of divine health than for you to have a revelation of prosperity. You know why? Because when you are healed, you are healed for yourself. But when you are blessed, you are blessed for others. You can't be healed for another person. Are you following me now? So every time you talk about prosperity and finances, all hell goes haywire. And Satan tries to do everything to cripple us. And stop us. That's the reason why in the world system, if you are rising to certain levels of wealth and prosperity, what happens? They initiate you into an occult. Remember the Freemasons, the Illuminati, and all of that. They tell you, okay, we want you to join this sect. And then they communicate to you the agenda of Satan. Hallelujah. So that you will be the one storing the wealth. And then you can control the activity of Satan. And the Bible says... I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he, did you see that he called the devourer a he? And he will not destroy. That's the fourth blessing. He will not destroy the what? The fruits of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you sow. It can be your job. It can be your business. Are you following me? It can be your academics. Anywhere you, he said he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Number five, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. There are many people who are involved in projects that can never finish. They never start a thing and complete it. The Bible says that the hand of Zerubbabel that has started this work, that same hand will complete it. All of these things are the curses that come as a result of not being a faithful and a diligent tither. It shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. He said, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before its time, saith the Lord. Verse 12. He said, and all nations shall do what? All nations shall call you blessed. Because the Lord will so bless you that that is going to be your testimony. Not just in your village, not just in your community. He said, all nations will testify that truly this is the blessed of the Lord. And the last blessing, the seventh blessing, for ye shall be a delightsome land. Ye shall be a delightsome land. It's interesting, the Bible uses a metaphor. It says you shall be a delightsome land. Not like. You shall be a delightsome land. Hallelujah. And so, many of you can now see the reason why, although you love God, although you are praying in tongues, certain things in your life are not just moving. Because you have not yet begun to operate the spiritual principles that will activate these things. Can I tell you something about the word of God? Every word that you see inspired of the spirit. By the way, let me just digress and say something. I shared with a few people yesterday. I just feel like chipping it in. We're learning a lot of things tonight. Look up, please. We call this the Bible. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. Not every word that is written here, please don't stone me. Please don't stone me yet. Not every word that is written here is called the word of God. Hallelujah. In this Bible, demons spoke. Is that correct? In this Bible, Satan spoke. In this Bible, unbelievers spoke. Is that correct? Please follow me. In this Bible, Jesus himself spoke. In this Bible, false prophets spoke. Are you following me now? So when the Bible gives us the future of what he calls the word of God, the word of God is any part in this Bible that is able to give you spirit and life. It says, the words that I speak, this is the proof that they are from me. They will give you spirit and life. So, not every word that is written here, as it were, is life-giving. Many of you want to attack me in the scripture that says, the Bible says, all scripture was inspired of the Holy Ghost and is for our profiting. Calm down. Let me explain this to you. Please, let me have two people, Aaron and someone, just come. Let me use you. Hallelujah. 
Now look up. I want to explain to you the difference between a true statement and a statement of truth. Are you following me now? So that we can understand the Bible and the word of God and get blessed from it. Look at this. Josiah is a lady. Hallelujah. Is that a true statement? That's not a true statement. Is that correct? But if Aaron tomorrow is recording all the activities that happened in Koinonia and he's writing it, he will say while Josh was speaking, he said, I follow me now. He said, Josiah is a lady. That's a statement of truth because I really said it. But is that a true statement? No. There are many statements of truth. So what the Holy Ghost did in the Bible was to breathe upon people so that they can record the events as it happened. Whether it's life-giving or not, that the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit came upon them so that they gave the details and the intricacies of Scripture. Now it's left for the Holy Spirit to fine-tune and help you search through it and pick out the principles of God and that part that is able to give you life. Hallelujah. People committed atrocities in scripture. Lord's, Lord's daughters, two of them slept with their father. Hallelujah. Is that statement life-giving? No. But did it happen? Yes. Are you following me now? I will tell you why I'm saying this. I hope you know. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Thank God. This is Koinonia. I hope you know that there are many things that Paul said in the Bible that are wrong according to the character of God's word. Hallelujah. Paul was a man like every other man. This is where I'm driving to. There are many people who have taken just anything. How many of us have had that same? If it's in the Bible, I will do it. I'll never show you the scripture, but I can, I can show you a place in, in the Bible where Paul permits a woman to sleep with a man. Is Paul Jesus Christ? I hope you know that Paul was also judged and will also be judged. Jesus Christ is the perfect theology. Are you following me now? Whether it's Paul or Apollos or Joshua Selman or E and I, I'm saying all of us are subject to the integrity of God's word, the principles of the kingdom that are contained in that word. Do you know that every Christian sect today uses the Bible to practice whatever they are doing. The Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it preach any message. Are you listening to me? I can take a scripture and the daughters of Lot slept with them. That can be my message. Is it in your Bible? Are you, are you getting blessed? I can take it and twist it, arrange it nicely, package it for anybody's selfish desire. I can just use a scripture and they gave. And then I stopped there. I said, I'm going to expound on that scripture and they gave. Because it came out of the Bible. So I am saying that the Holy Spirit must help us to understand that scattered in these scriptures we call the Bible are the statements of Satan, God, false prophets, true prophets, all kinds of things. The Holy Spirit, that's why when you study your Bible without the Holy Spirit, you can never get blessed. So many people choose the Holy Spirit and leave the Bible. Or say, let's take the Bible and leave the Holy Spirit. No, no. So when the Bible says all scripture was inspired by the Holy Spirit, what it's trying to say is that the Holy Spirit made everything. Are you listening to me? He made the people to write all of these details. But you can't sit down and start claiming and say, and Lot, and um, the daughters of Lot slept with him, and they slept with him, and meditating on the word. What is the meaning of that? There are many things that people did in the Bible. I hope you know that if we were in Bible days, maybe they can archive what we are doing now and they can say maybe the epistle of Koinonia or something and add it. Hallelujah. Do you realize that there are not only 66 books that were written? It's in your Bible. John 21. The Bible says there are many other works and miracles that Jesus did that were not recorded here. But these few have been recorded to the end that we may believe. Are you following me now? I'm not talking of all those demonic and satanic books that everybody has around. 
are you getting blessed i just digress to put this point so i can make a statement like this and although it's incorrect but it was contained in the bible and then many people just take it hook line and sinker god bless you sir Go sit down. i'm just trying to tell you that you must press and get the reality of god's word not just scripture to put in your head are you listening to me you must get the spirit and the life of the word of god i have another challenge for you for those of you who have studied bible history i hope you know that in the days of paul and ananias these 66 books were not there are you following me question what did they call their own word of god because it was long after they died i hope you know that that their epistles were archived together by the spirit of god and brought to what we call today the bible at their time they had only the law and the prophets and the law and the prophets was not given to everyone it was kept in the temple so when they said the word of god is quick and powerful what was their word of god hmm. sila we're talking about finances let's go back hallelujah and so your tithe opens you up to the blessings of god can i tell you something brothers and sisters please look up you are not doing god i'll say it again and again you are not doing god no pastors no ministers not any church or ministry a favor when you pay your tithe are you listening to me if you understand god's system and the operation of god's system you will realize that when you pay your tithe you are climbing the ladder you are opening up yourself to financial abundance hallelujah no matter how hard you work no matter what other principles and laws you know if you are not a tighter you will never get blessed god's way you can get blessed through any other means but i'm telling you you will never get blessed god's way and every time you are prosperous in a way that is not of god the bible says do not envy the wicked their end is destruction are you getting blessed tonight and so god wants us to be faithful titans is one way of being open to the things of heaven abraham gave a tenth a tithe to melchizedek and melchizedek blessed abraham he said blessed be abraham possessor of the heavens and the earth hezekiah gave his tithe he gave a tithe and a tenth portion there are many of us that have this mindset that god wants my money he wants to take my money how can i give tithe when i have only five thousand naira pocket money or oh, my mother gave her tithe before she gave us her parents give tithe as big as you are you say your parents give tithe can i tell you something every finance that comes into your hand that is yours for your profiting and your consumption you should tithe from it you cannot tithe your school fees because it's not money for your consumption are you listening to me don't let anybody manipulate you and maneuver you and say just bring it you know we men of god like more hey, just bring it say school fees say yes bring it remove 10 percent no no god gives us wisdom you can they cannot give you money to keep for a project for maybe you you are keeping money for a group and then you get up and just say our lives must move forward without their consent and everything you just tithe and do all. no 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 the bible doesn't teach us to be foolish people but the bible teaches us to be doers of the word say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be a faithful tither one more time in the name of jesus i receive grace to be a faithful tither for the last time in the name of jesus i receive grace to be a faithful tither hallelujah is so important so your first connection to the economy of heaven is your tithe now how does god bless us as titers this is why this is what i want to tell you because many believers do not know how the blessing comes how does the blessing come there are two principal ways god releases the blessing number one the favor of god favor with god and with men this is one vehicle of receiving the blessing of God as a result of your tithing. Favor with God and favor with men. 
please write it number one favor that's how the blessing is channeled favor with god and favor with men number two ideas concepts and insights ideas concepts and insights samadeh me wrote a book ideas rule the world if you can if you can lay your hands on the book you can read it a very powerful book ideas concepts and insights can i tell you something the bible says in exodus 31 it says i have called bezalel and I have anointed him with the spirit of wisdom and creativity to uh, do all kinds of craftsmanship and this and that. There is something called the spirit of Bezalel. God giving you ideas, concepts, insight. In Job 32 verse 8, the Bible says, There is a spirit in man and the inspiration, the breath of the Almighty maketh him of understanding. These are the principal ways that God channels these blessings to us in the earth. Concepts, ideas, insights. Are you listening to me? You are a faithful tighter and you just sit down. And God just opens you up. Look at the gentleman who came and shared the testimony about his book. Are you following me now? God gives him what? Insights. You are just sitting and God gives you an idea. I hope you know that when God gives you one idea, it can, you can bring a generational blessing to your generation. Just one idea from the Lord. Most of the people who brought inventions to our world today were people who were faithful and they adhered to God's principles. So favor, suddenly doors begin to be opened unto you. God brings favor he was saying he was just sitting down and a text message just came into his phone many of you do not believe in this manifestation of God where strangers come to feed your flock a stranger just calls you and says give me your account number. I say forget Jared they are just your friend or a stranger I'll never forget in 2007 someone called me 6 10 in the morning called me shaking under the anointing and said is this Joshua Selman I said yes he said send me your account number I said ah who are you he said, that's not the most important thing. God gave me an instruction. Send me your account number. And that was the first time I began to see this manifestation of strangers. Reverend Dr. Uma Okpai said that one time they needed some money. And then from the money God instructed him, they gave tight and they did everything. He said he came to the drawer of his office. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit just told him, open your drawer. And he opened and he saw the exact amount in an envelope written to him. Nobody could have accessed his office. He called his secretary and said, what is this? Say, I don't know anything about it. Many of you do not believe in these manifestations. These are the blessings that come on account of being faithful titans. See, I'm telling you this. Take it seriously. Take it seriously. Many of our parents would have been better people today if they had the opportunity to receive these teachings. Are you listening to me? And so, the favor of God and wisdom, ideas, concepts, insights. Hallelujah. When you are a faithful titan. Number two, your offerings. The Bible says in tithes and offerings, we connect to the economy of heaven with our offerings and our givings, really. Not just your offerings, but your, your giving. Luke 6, 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Can you help me, media? Luke 6, 38. The Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto thee. It shall be given unto you. Give, and it shall be given. Listen, listen. Let me show you something powerful. It says, give. And it shall be given unto you. This is how many of us read the scripture. Let it be given unto me. Then I will give. Yeah. Hallelujah. Many people say, Lord, if only you bless me. Make me a millionaire and see what I will do. God is saying, you will never become one. It is your giving that will make you one. 
Are you listening to me? Don't ever... See, isn't it amazing that whenever you need breakthrough from God, God will demand from you. The Bible talks about a, a widow in Zarafa. It says that she was about to eat her last meal with her son and perish. And the Bible says that God sent a prophet to her. And when he went, he said, please bring me water. And while she was going, he said, and prepare a morsel of bread for me too. And she got angry. She said, I, I, I'm about to eat the last one so that we'll die. Isn't it amazing that when your resources are running red, that's when God begins to demand that you give. Many people feel that that's when he wants to destroy and kill your resources. That's the way he connects you to the blessing of heaven. If your mindset does not change, you'll be a greedy and a stingy person and you will never truly grow and be blessed. Are you following me? The Bible says give and it shall be given unto you. And then it tells you how it, I mean the, the quantity. He said good measure, pressed down, and shaken together and running over. <laughs> Interesting. Shall. So your blessing is in the hands of men. Shall men give unto you. If every one of us here becomes a millionaire. I hope you know that one million will not fall from heaven. It's already in circulation in the hands of men. But when you perform your kingdom obligation. Are you following me now? God will cause by the wisdom of his spirit and by the manifestation of wisdom in your life for now what we call the wealth of the wicked to find its way into the hand of the righteous. He said, for with the same measure that ye meet, without shall it be measured unto you. So never say the size of your seed does not matter. Hello? God, just give God anything. No, no. At the same time, don't let anybody twist your hand. I'm going to be showing you some things about giving. Are you following me now? Because there are too many people that have twisted the hands of God's people because they want gain. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So your giving is one way hallelujah second corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6 but this i say unto you listen he which soweth sparingly listen he that sows shall reap is that correct he that sows sparingly shall reap but he shall reap what is it in your bible you can choose to believe it and comply to the principles or just argue with it and trivialize it. He said, he that soweth sparingly, he shall reap sparingly. And he that soweth what? Bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Now verse 7 is where I want to challenge a lot of the wrong teachings about giving. 7. Every man according as what? He has proposed in his heart not according to how they twisted his hands. Let me tell you something. The Bible does not teach that gospel of coercing and threatening people into giving. That's very satanic. That's very demonic. I don't care who is doing it. It's not consistent with God's word. Hallelujah. To say if you don't give, you will die. If you have up to 20,000 naira in your account and you don't bring out money, tomorrow you will be caused. No, sir. Bible doesn't teach that. It said, every man, according as he has proposed in his heart, you can be encouraged to give. You can hear a word and it will provoke you and ginger you to give more. Are you listening to me? That if you empty your account today, let it be that you were convicted or instructed by the Spirit and that you are doing it cheerfully. Cheerfully doesn't mean you are laughing. Cheerfully just means from a gladdened heart because sometimes you will cry. Sometimes it will be your Isaac. Am I blessing you tonight? It says, let him not give grudgingly. Brothers and sisters, one of the reasons why so many believers give and don't get blessed is because they give grudgingly. Hallelujah. I cannot tell you how I've counseled people over the years who come and meet me and say they forced me to drop my phone. They forced me to remove my shoe. They forced me to remove my hair tie. They for that ministry of forcing, forcing, forcing. 
The man of God doing it may not be fake, but I'm telling you that principle is not consistent with the character of the word of God. I apologize if I, if I seem to condemn. I, I don't preach condemnation. Are you listening to me? But I need to address this truth because I want to help us. It says what? For God loves who? A cheerful giver. It doesn't mean he loves a smiling giver. He loves a giver who does things from his heart. Have you seen people who drop seeds immediately afterwards? They just came to the man of God and said, Sorry, oh, I will not lie to you. That thing that I dropped, I don't know what came upon me. They just forced me, give back my thing. That's my father's answer. Verse 8. Verse 8. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto all good works. So, by your giving, God will bless you. Listen, hear me. Your giving is not by force. Your giving is a choice. Hallelujah. Your giving is a choice. The Bible talks of giving God your tithe, your first fruit. There is also the principle of first fruit. The principle of first fruit is a way of honoring God. Are you listening to me? It was a Jewish custom. Well, it really existed before the Jewish custom. It really wasn't in the law. Are you listening to me? For those of you who have been taught that tithing is part of the law. No. Tithing started way before the law. Alongside with principle of first fruit and the rest. The Bible tells us that Cain and Abel came and Cain gave of his firstlings and his fat. And I mean, Abel gave of his firstlings and his fatlings. Hallelujah. And Cain just put vegetables on the, on the altar and then nothing happened. He wasn't blessed. So it's a way of showing God that he's first in your life and even in your resources. Are you listening to me? That if many people do it in different ways, they can give their salary for January or their earnings for January or their first salary when they, are, when they get a job, that also is not compulsory. The only compulsory thing in scripture is your tithe. Every other thing is a revelation, it's an admonishment, but if you love your life, just like salvation is not compulsory, however, it has consequences. One of it is failure in this life. The second one, which is the greatest, is hellfire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you getting blessed tonight? Hallelujah. And so this is very, very, very important for us to understand. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. It says, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 9 and 10. It says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. Verse 10, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty. It says, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst with new wine. These are the blessings that follow those who are serious with honoring the Lord with their first fruit and with the increase of their substance. It's amazing. When you count the offerings in church, you see 10 naira, 5 naira. Immediately after that, you see gala, 15 naira. Um, juice. You see people buy all kinds of things. A rich man comes with 1 million and just squeezes um, 50 naira, just counts it and just squeezes in the offering. Give him, give him, I will give. And as his passes, just drop it. And you are frowning. Listen, it's our revelation of God. You must come to a point where you esteem God. I cannot be spending 200 naira eating a meal. Spending 10,000 naira buying clothes. And then when it comes to investing and securing, the Bible says, lay not for yourself treasure on the earth here where arm robbers can come and steal it and where it gets it's a late treasure i hope you know that you have a heavenly account read my time in heaven by richard sigmund and he gives us a picture of the bank in heaven and the activities there that every time a believer tithes and he gives it is credited to him in heaven i know that these things sound very childish and it sounds like cartoon but it's true whether or not you believe it there is a heavenly account it is credited by your giving. So number one, your tithing. Number two, your giving. Number three, your kingdom investments. I'm teaching you your supernatural connection to the economy of heaven.
kingdom investments when there's a project on ground when when i hope you know this with time maybe not now i will show us that the reason why the years of hezekiah was averted was because they gave and they gave they sold and gave diligently to the advancement of the house of god can i tell you something you must come to a point where you realize that your financial commitment in the house of God is not just a favor you are doing God. It's a kingdom responsibility. The purpose of right is so that you can be a responsible citizen. So if you know that your right in Christ is for you to be prosperous, you must realize that God designed his house to flourish by the givings of God's people. Hallelujah. Take away that mindset. That makes it look like pastors are just here to give and chop your money and do all of these things. Are you listening to me? So your tithe, your supernatural connection, your tithe, there are blessings that come from it. Your giving, your commitment in the house of the Lord. I'm not just talking of financial commitment alone. Are you listening to me? I'm talking of the commitment, your time, your efforts, your energy. He said, they that be planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of God. He said, in all age, they will still bear fruit. These are the blessings that follow those who are serious with God and can commit their finances to God. Hallelujah. So every time, let me tell you something. For a very long time, I thought this concept of tithing and offering was just a manipulation of people to walk in my, on my mind. And I know that there are people who do it. Every meeting is offering meeting. Every meeting, I've said it here, your seed does not do everything for you. Hello, I will say it again. Your seed cannot do everything for you. Otherwise, millionaires would have been the most successful people, spiritually free, free from demons, free from everything. Satan is still oppressing the rich, oppressing the poor. Your seed cannot do everything. The Bible says, this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. However, your seed can secure a glorious destiny. The Bible says in Genesis 8, I believe, verse 11, 12, it says, as far as the earth remains, am I correct? Seed time and harvest. Genesis 8, right? Yeah, 22, sorry. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest. Are you seeing this? The Bible is giving you God's principle. It says, so long as the earth remains, it's a law. Seed time. Whenever you sow, you will reap. Seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease question has cold and heat stopped has summer and winter stopped has day and night stopped why will seed time and harvest stop let me ask you a question how many of you have planted seeds in your farm and you went back the next and say you must grow there are certain laws in the spirit that once you obey them, they engage themselves and move into action immediately. Hallelujah. Very quickly, I want to talk about one other issue and then we'll round up for now. I want to talk about the concept of the attitude for giving and then your storehouse. You must, especially your tithing, I want us to just dwell a little on that tithing. <clears throat> hallelujah look at me god doesn't just want your money don't carry your tithe for many of you your attitude towards giving and tithing has a long way to go in bringing blessings to your life many of you just come and then when you see a man of god or see offering basket or they say tithe has come out you just say ah it's true you just squeeze one you just bring all of them and say, ah, this is a new one from the bank. You just bring out one very dirty tata thing. You say, ah, the, the finance department will use super glue. And then you just bring it out. And then you come and stand and squeeze it. And while they are praying, you are busy eyeing people. And you come and say, God, Shabi, you have disturbed me. Take. Oh, yeah. Bring the, bring the blessing for me. Your attitude. 
Buy envelopes. Package your tithe. Do it with revelation. And can I tell you something? Do not drop your tithe anywhere. They will not pray and speak a blessing for you. That's the connection. Are you listening to me? It's not just say, ah, tithe. Then bless me, just open his boy. as a pussy jerry. And then he say, bye-bye. No, no. In Jewish days, they didn't just drop tithe like that. There was a prophetic blessing that was spoken upon it. It is that blessing that will activate that law. Are you listening to me? This is very powerful. That's why every time people bring tithes, no matter how busy I am, I say, no, hold on. Every time you drop a tithe and the man of God doesn't say anything, politely demand and say, sir, I request that you speak a prophetic word. And not just anything you like. You don't just speak what you wish. You can speak that on an offering, but there is a specific blessing for, it, for the tithe. Are you listening to me? You cannot listen. You can't drop tithe and then I say, Go. Your house will experience exponential blessing. No, that's not the blessing that is tied to tithing. The Bible makes us to understand that there are seven prophetic blessings. And so it's your job to prophesy these blessings and release it upon the tithers. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? I submit to you. These are not things that I read in textbooks alone. These are realities by, that by the grace and the mercy of God we are abiding by. There's one thing to teach something you know or you read from a book. There is another thing when you are teaching your reality. Are you listening to me? This is the reality. By the grace of God, the treasurer is here and, and, and the financial secretary is here. From the time Koinonia started, there is no week we have not tithed as a ministry. How in the world are we not going to be blessed and rich? Are you listening to me? That's why we keep increasing from glory to glory in our finances. There's no magic about it. Look at the young people that are responsible for this and look at what God is doing. Doesn't it tell you there is a supernatural dimension to it? We have been faithful by the grace of God. As a ministry to his glory, we do not owe God one naira. That's why every time he keeps giving us ideas, concepts, like he said he will, inside that's why he rebukes the devourer for our sake every time i'm praying over the tithe of eni i say lord everyone who comes under the covering of eni i attach them to the blessings of this tithing that's why some of you have not been tithing yet you have been prospering we have been praying for you but now god is teaching you so that you can begin to move into certain levels of blessing see ah that's the secret i'll be chopping my tithe and quietly be coming for friday meetings Hallelujah. Many of you need to teach. Do you know that for many of you, this is the solution to the cry of your families? They think it's more jobs. or more. It's not. I've said this thing again and again. I don't know how many times I'm going to emphasize. If you think that you are going to work for every blessing you get in this life, get, re get ready to die. Guys, you want to build a house. How much is one block? How much is one block? If you want to work for everything, I know many of us like working. <laughs> Get said to die young. There is the blessing of the Lord. There is the blessing of the Lord. I'm telling you, it has nothing to do with your age. Many of you say, where do I start from? I don't have anything. I have been owing God and all of that. We'll not talk about storehouse. We're out of time. Hallelujah. But have you gotten something tonight? To understand that your tithe is a spiritual obligation. Every time you package your tithe, brothers and sisters, never you think God just wants your money. I hope you know before you were born, heaven was made of, of the streets of gold. And it, it didn't increase. The gold, the size of the gold didn't increase because you were born. Let me tell you something, friends. God wants to bless us. The Bible says, He who did not withhold his son, but offered him, how much more with him will he not give us freely all things? God wants you to prosper. Say it after me. God wants me to prosper. Me to prosper. Many of you say, eh, but I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing any business. I'm not doing anything. 
before your business will come, you can be stepping into the prosperity of God. The purpose of business and all of these things and all those ideas and laws we put is to continue the flow and to prove your faithfulness and to position yourself for increase. Hallelujah. You can begin to activate these principles right now and see favor come into your life. But many of you say, ah, Shea, you are just talking because you are a man of God. Everybody knows you. Shea, every week at least somebody must bring offering. Was I born a man of God? Hallelujah. Obedience to the word of God. You may be sitting down and say, okay, our family, where do we start from? Call your parents. Collect these teachings and send home. And tell them, please, let's begin to tithe. Let's begin to tithe. Kenneth Copeland was in debt. One of the richest, the wealthiest ministers, the principal partner of Reinhard Bonke's ministry. I hope you know that. Kenneth Copeland is the major partner behind Reinhard Bonke's ministry that has come to bless many of us in this country. Hallelujah. And when he came, he was in debt of over $250,000. There was nothing he didn't do. And then God showed him this scripture and he made up his mind. Hallelujah. He said he will never collect debt. Can I tell you something? Friends, look up. Stop collecting debt. We'll talk about that maybe next week. Stop it. I thought I could never do without it. Many of you think you cannot do without it. Things will change the day you make up your mind. Hallelujah. I told myself no more borrowing money and as a personal principle i'm not saying you should do it i don't borrow people money i give because the bible says i found in my bible oh no man nothing but love i said that's it that is it i don't borrow people money i don't care how much i rather tell you okay i cannot meet that level but this is what i can give you that's why i love people because there's nobody i see and frown and say see let me tell you this night you will see me in your room hallelujah many of you borrow money for trivial things you borrow money to make your hair is that is that wisdom hallelujah you borrow money to buy fridge and make your room you borrow money to buy a blackberry for yourself then you come back and find out that it's only the case that is left you borrow money to do all kinds of things. See, you may be tongue-talking, but these are some of the things that we do that land us in trouble. Many of our parents, they borrow money and buy tire of car. Is that an asset? You go to the bank, you collect heavy loan. Is the credit system that is killing Americans. Thank God for Nigeria. I'm proud of being a Nigerian. There's no credit system here. If you don't have it, cash, trust God for it. If you don't have it, manage what you have. In, 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 in America and the rest, you can build an empire on credit and leave your children and your children. There are people, America, for many of you who want to run their safe journey, let me tell you, America is the country that is owing debt most in the world 170 trillion u.s dollars that's america's debt are you listening to me 20 billion is added every day let me give you statistics so you you see the kind of future they are putting for their children their children will wake up with a yoke they will not recover from but the bible says for us in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed stop envying them and thinking that their life is nice nice for what they eat hamburgers in credit sausages in credit beautiful jeeps and then they use some and push it down to nigeria and they laugh at us they say this and we are trusting god lord i trust you i can start with the tokumbo six hundred thousand. by faith you start when you buy a car you buy is yours proud of being a nigerian teaches us to be patient and to move at god's pace at your age in america you'd have had a house and a car that you didn't pay for so they tell you when you start working then you start reducing it then many of the rich people this is a satanic agenda what you call the recession today is a byproduct of the wickedness of a select few people who are playing the world like a chess hallelujah are you getting blessed 
So many of you who are happy when you hear in the news that they want to introduce the credit system in Nigeria, you say, yes, we'll stop suffering in ABU. By the time you calculate how much you have spent on credit from 100 level till final year, you will turn and see that you are owing 20 million. You see, as young as I am, God wants to bless me. Say it after me. God wants to bless me. I believe God's ways and I will apply them. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for tonight. Just pray in tongues for one minute. Say, Lord, grace to be a doer of the word. That greedy and selfish spirit that makes believers not to tithe, that makes believers not to commit themselves in giving, not to commit themselves in kingdom sacrifices, Go ahead and say, Lord, I take authority over that spirit that makes me think that God wants to finish my resources. Make sure you are praying. Mante prateka sekata baba Grace to be a tighter in the name of Jesus. Grace to be diligent in my tithing. Grace to be diligent in my tithing. Pray. Grace to be diligent. God's principles will never fail. It will work in Zaria. It will work in Joss. It will work in America. It will work in your village. It will work in your family. I don't care what situation you are in now or how much debt you are in. The word of God can bring you out. Make up your mind, young and old, to begin to live by the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Meditate on these things. First Timothy 4 verse 15. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear. He said meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly unto them that your profiting will appear unto all. Hallelujah. I like you to believe it. For many of you, it will start this night. I tell you the truth. Many of you will begin to take authority. You don't take authority over the devourer just by crying and laughing. Hallelujah. I want to encourage everyone. We'll be doing this all through this series. I want to encourage everyone right now to bring out a seed in your hand. We don't do this, but let me tell you something. I will cheat you if I don't engage you in this. Are you listening to me? Bring out a seed. And we are going to pray. We are going to activate this and pray. And say we take authority over the devourer. Please bring out a seed. If you don't have a seed, just hold the hands of someone. We are not just talking about your money. Are you listening to me? We are not just saying your money, your money. Many of you, when you hear bring out a seed, you start frowning. Keep your money if you don't believe what we are doing. It's a spiritual principle to bless us and to cause us to prosper. It's a desire that everyone will prosper. Tithe in your business. Tithe in your company. Tithe as a fellowship. Tithe as a church. Be faithful in it. Tithe as husband and wife, as a couple, as a family. Do it. Practice it. Hallelujah. Bring out, bring out your seed. And we are going to pray right now. You are going to lift it up and pray and say, Lord, I take authority over the devourer. In my life and my family, go ahead and pray. And say, Satan, take your hands off my finances. Take your hands off the finances of my family. All the blessings, the financial blessings, that are mine in Christ, I receive it. Make sure. Go ahead and pray. I position myself for increase. I position myself for increase. If you don't have any seed on your hand, connect with a brother or a sister that has a seed. It will still work for you. 
We rebuke the devourer in our midst in the name of Jesus. We are faithful tithers. Grace to be faithful tithers. Grace to be givers. Grace to be givers. Grace to commit ourselves in the house of God. Grace to commit ourselves. Go ahead and pray. Say, I break greed. I break selfishness. I come against the spirit of greed. That spirit that makes me feel God wants to take all my money. Go ahead and pray. I position myself for increase. I position myself for prosperity. I position myself for blessings. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I refuse to lack. Go ahead. Break the power of lack in your life. I break free from poverty. I break free from lack. I have abundance. I have abundance in the name of Jesus for the sake of God's glorious kingdom. I have abundance. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 says, Ye know the grace of our Lord, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. We break the hand of lack and poverty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point very quickly. You're going to call forth favor into your life and call forth ideas concepts and insights say lord i call forth favor let it begin to flow in my life favor everywhere i go come on pray men begin to run over themselves to bless me i am blessed in the city i am blessed in the country my gates are continually open to receive the forces of the gentiles strangers will feed my flock in the name of jesus i walk in abundance i suck honey from the rock in the name of jesus prosperity is my heritage in christ i walk in it i refuse poverty i reject poverty it comes from satan Hallelujah. 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 I want to prophesy over you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that as you leave this place, the Lord will give you a sign that this message is from Him and for your finances. This week, I prophesy that next, Saturday, next Friday, there will be tons and tons of testimonies supernatural financial blessings i release it to you in the name of the lord jesus strangers men that you do not know i call them forth the bible calls god the father of spirits begin to speak to those spirits my father i call forth favor everywhere your finances have been tied down for yourself for your family there are many people that are owing your parents this week in the name of jesus i command favor 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 let every closed financial door be open in the name of jesus hallelujah go ahead and cast your seeds and begin to pray in the spirit as you cast your seeds just in one minute ushers let's do it quickly begin to pray in the spirit Mam pro sabaka prenda karia de 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 rosa. Reka taba la rabosa. Lord, we give because we believe. We give to activate your word in our lives. We give because we believe. Inside and outside, go ahead and pray. Lord, we give because we believe. We expect a performance. We expect a performance by the Spirit of the Lord God. 
we expect a performance blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance unto her there shall be a performance unto you go ahead and pray in tongues i position myself for the blessings of the lord hallelujah hallelujah take our time this week study the following scriptures please very quickly very quickly hallelujah genesis 8 22 genesis 8 22 Genesis 8:22 Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10 Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10 Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12 Hallelujah Luke chapter 6 verse 38 and 39 Luke chapter 6 verse 38 and 39 Isaiah chapter 45 verse 2 and 3 hmm. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places Hallelujah Isaiah 48 Isaiah 48 verse 17 says I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit Hallelujah Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 Ye know the grace of our Lord that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor that ye through his poverty might become rich. Second Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6 to 11 Philippians chapter 4 from verse 12 to 19 Philippians chapter 4 from verse 12 to 19 Ecclesiastes chapter 11 from verse 1 to 10 the whole chapter Ecclesiastes 11 verse 1 to 10 Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26 hallelujah let's stop there for now lord we thank you for this meeting tonight we receive grace to be doers of your word in the name of jesus we expect a performance by your spirit now if you are worshiping with us for the first time very quickly i'd like you to leave your seat and just run out here inside and run out here inside